I did my first workout yesterday in months. And damn, am I feeling it. Not where I expected either. Ow. So hello and welcome to Dommy Tries This. I hope you brought your cuppa. Today's coffee mug is the last of the Christmas coffee mugs that I think I'm going to be showing you. Uh, this is says, Oh Snap. It was on sale at Kroger and my daughter found it for me along with a couple of others, but this is the one she actually chose. And in our Oh Snap mug is the Walters Bay Growers of Premium Ceylon Tea Vanilla Rooibos, Herbal Infusion, Naturally Caffeine Free. And I'm assuming there's nothing but vanilla and rooibos, roi, roi, rooibos, rooibos, it's rooibos. I always get it wrong. You all know, I always get it wrong. Uh, tea with a purpose, uh, the care provided, da, da, da. By purchasing this tea directly from the grower, you are promoting social environmental, environmental sustainability. Uh, and these initiatives include child care centers, schools, retirement savings plans, and medical care for our tea estate workers and their families. As a grower, our care for the land and its resources is sacred. Like, all grow like the growers at your local farmer's market, we at Walters Bay take great pride in what we grow. So there we go. I haven't tried this yet, I don't think. Um, it wasn't marked as uh, reviewed on my Sips By. This is the last Sips By tea for the month of December. Then running behind, I will catch up this month. Um, I will catch up this month. All right, so let's go ahead and give it a sip and then we will get started. Not getting any scent, which is interesting. Uh, this mug is at least 16, probably close to 18, 20 ounces, somewhere in there. I did not fill her up. It's about three quarters full. So hopefully this tea will stand up to it. It was a nice, one of those nice little um, cloth temples, uh, not the paper ones that you see. So not smelling anything. Right now she's sweet. <laughs> Getting the vanilla really, really well, I think, at least for the moment. We'll see what changes. So today we are doing another one of my dragon bites. We're going to be talking about resolutions versus goals. To me, there is a difference. I know a lot of people will be like, well, resolution is a goal. To me, there is a difference. We'll be talking about that in a minute. But first, there's two things. First of all, um, you'll notice I'm not wearing any earrings. And that's because I have my very last Jenny Bell. I did not open it uh, in front in, in the... Um, the usual kind of opening where I have something else going on because she is uh, temporarily closing her shop. At least I hope it's temporarily. Um, this was very sudden. I had talked to her uh, shortly after these shipped, I think, and she had said nothing about it at the time. And um, then she contacted me and told me she was going to have to at least temporarily, and I'm hoping it's just temporarily, but at least temporarily close shop. And when I asked her about it, we're, we've become fairly good friends uh, in emails and stuff, uh, and as well as, you know, we're kindred souls in our jewelry love and our in, uh, earring love. Uh, she's She has a lot of stuff going on. So I didn't add, I wanted to open it, and these are absolutely gorgeous, Jenny. They're really beautiful and long, and so... I'm going to wear these today, at least for now. I actually have plans to do um, another video, and these will probably get switched out. She was worried about the hooks not being quite right. Uh, as long as I can bend them down a little bit so they don't feel like they're going to slip. And yes, they bent. Holy crap. <laughs> these are great. Oh, I love it. These are great. These are amazing. Come on off. I don't even need the little back that she included with them. So, oh, there we go. There 
There we go. I don't think I've ever had earrings as long, ever as long as these. These are so cool. <laughs> I have to sit up real straight. I have to almost stand up so you can see the bottom of them. They are so neat. Anyway, so I wanted to go ahead and share those. And, and actually, my look is somewhat of a based on the color story of these earrings. I didn't use any of the green, but I did use uh, like the reddish color. Also on the uh, shirt that I'm wearing. I didn't want to look like Christmas, which is why I didn't use the green. And we all know how I feel about browns. A uh, wonderful pair of multicolored tassel and graduated hoop earrings. One of a kind design are perfect for any time of the year. and Very trendy as tassels are currently very popular. They are complete with fine 18 karat gold plated ball ear wires. Uh, retail value is $33.95 as I recall. As you recall, this, this subscription ran about $17. I do hope that she is going to come back. Um, like I said, I didn't open it because I, you guys don't need all the paperwork that goes with the subscription because she's not going to be open. But I do hope she does come back or at the very least opens a Etsy shop. And uh, if she has an Etsy shop, she does open an Etsy shop, then um, yeah, I'll be buying from there. Uh, there are several on Etsy that I'm interested in, but a lot of them are in the $50 range. At least she's in the 20 to 30 on the value. So hopefully, um, hopefully something will improve for her. And Jenny, if you're watching, um, yeah, I hope everybody, everybody and everything goes well and that uh, we see you again soon. So that is the first thing I had to complete the look with the earrings. Really long earrings. These are just amazing. <laughs> She's like, now, I never said, give me, you know, six inch or 12 inch earrings. And she's she's starting to challenge herself based on some of the challenges I've given her. So that's cool. <laughs> okay. That was too funny. <laughs> My husband came into the kitchen and that was Sora yelling at him. And he was going, shh. Too funny. All right, moving right along. Um, also, I wanted to show you what we're using today. I don't typically do that for the uh, uh, dragon bites because we're just talking and I'm putting on makeup, getting ready for another video when we're talking. However, these are uh, one of the first indie brands. Well, it will be the second by the time you see it. But they are an indie brand that I have uh, did not open as a separate indie uh what do I call it? The Indie Focus that I do. The Indie Spotlight. Uh, I actually opened them early because I wanted to use them today because the palette is still available. It is on sale and uh, it's half off. So uh, the two things that I got, this is from Chaotic Cosmetics and this was in uh, one of my Dami's wishlist things. This is the Dreadful palette. I can tell you this packaging is really nice. It's very heavy and it comes, uh, it came fairly well wrapped. Um, it was it was in, you know, the bubble wrap, but it was in a mailer, just so you know. It had a nice little heart on it. And they gave me a lot of little extra things, obviously. Here's the palette without the, the cover on it. Obviously, the cover and the palette. This is very thick. It has a mirror. And here's our colors. I'm not going to swatch them. I will swatch them when I actually do an actual review. I did want to get it out there, though, in case anybody was interested in it. Because, like I said, it is on sale. It is a Halloween palette. So once it's out, it's out. So it's a limited edition Halloween palette. And um, so that you could take a look and see how they applied and how they worked. And if you decide if you wanted to go ahead and put your $15 out on it. Also, they had my favorite kind of liner, and that is uh, one of the pot liners. So I picked up this purple pot liner. I'm also wearing that today. And so these both uh, are, basically I did manage a one palette look. You all know how amazing that is. I don't normally do that. I normally have two or three palettes where I take two or three shades from each palette or something like that. So anyway, um, any, so here is the look, generally speaking, so you can take a look at it that's finished. So if you're interested in this look that we've done with the, this particular palette all by itself, then just go ahead and keep on watching, and here we go. So we are at the beginning of the year, and um, this is the time of year people make resolutions, those 
let's we're going to get this done this year that's what they are pretty much is resolutions and one of the biggest resolutions of course that we see is everybody's going on a freaking diet the dieting commercials have started and they are driving me bonkers but moving on so we see a lot of people trying to make you know basically hard and set this is what i'm going to do to me that's what a resolution is they're hard and set they are um there's no shades of gray. Either you made it or you didn't. So for that reason, I don't actually make resolutions. I make goals. And um, most of my goals are pretty much the same every year. They involve uh, writing, getting healthier, things of that nature. Uh, so... But the thing with goals for me versus resolutions is that goals have variations in them. Um, milestones, I guess, would be the word. Uh, resolutions are like you lost the five pounds or you didn't lose the five pounds. Goals are more like, oh, hey, I want to lose five pounds. So I'm going to make it a goal to lose five pounds. But... But that's just my goal. If I get two and a half pounds, I'll be happy because I would have made progress. For me, goals, resolutions are more about this is the thing I'm going to do, period. I'm going to reach this. This is how I'm going to get there. Goals are I'm aiming for it, but all I want is progress. And I... I'm happy with progress. I really am. That's me. I'm just a progress girl. That said, <laughs> this year I haven't made any yet. I intend to make some. Just not now. I want to get past the inauguration. Because at this point, anything can happen. Um... We've all watched him lose his freaking mind over Georgia right now. I'm actually filming on voting day, so... Um, but yeah, he's been losing his freaking mind, trying to overturn election results, talking about not leaving. Um, his supporters are talking about him not leaving. So I just want to get past inauguration. I want to get past... Any of the upheaval, any of the problems, any of the whatever's going to happen. I want to get past that. I honestly, last year I made my goals. Didn't know we had a pandemic coming, but I made my goals in good faith, so to speak. I knew exactly what I wanted to do. I actually started off in January and February really well. And then... I mean, I was already stressed out, but I figured, you know, some of these things I could do. And then the pandemic hit. From March on, for example, my writing. I was really surprised when I was setting up my planner this year that I actually managed to get some writing in. I didn't remember getting any writing in. <laughs> Much less almost 4,000 words of writing in the first two months of uh, 2020. I, I honestly didn't remember writing anything. Uh, I didn't remember doing any editing. I was editing a novel for a friend and everything just sort of fell apart uh, in 2020, as we all know. I didn't remember doing any of that stuff, but I did. And then, like I said, the pandemic hit and people were suddenly having to stay home and it is very hard to write and concentrate and write anyway. So no writing was getting done. None. No writing. Just, um, I just couldn't do it. I couldn't bring myself to do it. So my lesson learned there pretty much was I need to get past all this stuff before I can make any, any goals, any promises to myself, aim for anything. Um, you know, just, I, I just have to, I have to wait. There's just too much crazy going on. The last couple of years have just been full of lots of 
upheavals for us. And every time I have failed at a goal, I have not felt good about it, so to speak. And when I say failed at a goal, I don't mean that, um, oh, I got a little bit done, but I didn't reach the whole goal. I mean, somewhere early in trying to get the goal done, I gave up for whatever reason. And there's been a lot of upheavals in my life recently that have led to um, goals not being done. Uh, they're part of the reason that kind of thing is that upheavals and stuff is part of the reason why I've been struggling with my exercise lately. Um, I've been struggling for like five years now. I had an injury and then I was raising my grandbaby and then my kids were moving out and then we were worried about, you know, all this other stuff with um, Trump and then the pandemic. And I mean, just it's it's too much. It's literally too much and uh, I pretty much have just decided that I'm not going to set myself up for yeah we got started and then everything fell apart because life went absolutely haywire and became something that I can't live with or can't work through right now because there's too much on my plate and I'm too distracted and you know all those things that were just basically pretty much um, becoming more than obstacles. It's, it's kind of strange. I don't want to say that they, they probably were overcomable. They just weren't for me at the time. There was just too much. There was just too much going on for me. And, um, yeah, so I'm not making any right away. I do intend to make some eventually. Like I said, I just want to get past this, uh, past the inauguration, see where we're at, see, you know, survive whatever is going to happen. There have been so many threats and so much going on that I'm just not, that brush isn't working very well for this. So let's try a firmer brush. Um, so I'm just not, I'm just not ready to commit to something for the year if we're going to end up being in some kind of crazy before before we get through January. So, um, well, we're already in some kind of crazy. I think we all agree with that. So, uh, yeah, I just, uh, I'm not doing my goals yet. However, I do intend to do some goals eventually and I do have an idea of where I want to be what I want to be doing one of the things that I'm doing right now to set up for that for one I'm actually doing little things now that I want to get done so yesterday I started lifting I'm feeling it I'm not as nearly as sore as I was afraid I would be but yeah I'm feeling it after being off for basically um 10 months, nine months, something like that. And then for months and months before that, yeah, I'm feeling it. Um, which is not a bad thing. Uh, honestly, when I did it yesterday, it kind of felt like going back to something comfortable, if that makes any kind of sense. And, um, I'm not sure how I feel about this palette right now. Anyway, moving on. So I'm doing little things now. Just getting started on little things. I'm thinking about the things that I want to do in in the future. Um, I'm, I'm trying to evaluate. Can I use, for example, can I use my eight pound weights right now for lifting? Or um, have I lost enough of my strength that I really need to look into um, reducing it. I'm also trying to figure out which um, exercises I need to do uh, to actually get the work in. Uh, like yesterday, I did a lot I try to do both core and upper. I can't do anything on the lower body right now because my knee's still 
sore. So I'm trying to figure out where I am with those exercises. And I'm also trying to figure out which exercises I might need to do more. So I need to figure out some extra core exercises that I can do that does not require too much from my knees or a way to um, do more of the core exercises that I'm used to doing that don't require too much of my knees. And yeah, so I'm, I'm evaluating. I haven't been logging at, uh, I use a, I was, was using a um, weight loss app called Lose It. And I haven't been logging there too much uh, in recent years because I didn't want to focus on weight and I want to, I want to um, improve my relationship with food by not, and with my body and my body signals by not um, focusing on exact amounts and stuff like that. And sometimes when you're logging your food, it can be um, problematic. Uh, you start focusing on those things you don't want to focus on. But I need to figure out where I'm at because one of the things that I need to do um, now that I'm trying to get back to being healthy again, one of the things I need to do is to evaluate where my diet is standing. Um, if I'm eat, if I'm reaching certain goals, there's, there are certain goals that I do have for like protein and um, fiber, which are really important if you're you're working on uh, working on muscle. And so I'm looking at those, and I'm actually kind of loosely logging again to start preparing for that a bit so that I can figure out uh, what I need to start focusing on when I do get to the goals. So I can, you know, so like right now, the goal at Lose It for um, my protein, I think is at 125. So if I'm not making 125, if I'm not anywhere close to 125, uh, I'm thinking I will reduce it down to, let's say my what I'm currently getting is 50 um, grams of protein. So what I will do is, is I will reduce that 125 down to say 75. Something reasonable that I can, I feel like I can reach. And then when I reach the 75, I'll go up to 100. When I reach the one, you know, the 100, I'll go up to 125. So I want to make it easier on me to reach those goals, but without going, okay, so this is the, the biggest goal here. We're going to just, we're basically taking those goals and I'm breaking them up so that I can, I can more easily, you know, get to them and reach them and not feel overwhelmed by having to suddenly go from, you know, 50 grams of protein to 125 grams of protein overnight. Cause that's not going to happen for one. We don't have that kind of stuff going on in the house and I need to figure out what I can put into my, um, budget and into my diet to reach those goals. Right. So yeah, right now I'm in the middle of doing my evaluations of where I stand with certain things. Uh, some of them is easy to figure out. I, I know exactly where I'm at with my writing. I haven't been writing in months. I haven't even touched my writing. I haven't even looked at my writing, which is honestly kind of sad. <laughs> but, um, I mean, I just, writing is one of those things that is, um, requires more of my brain than I have right now, which sounds kind of weird, but we have just had so much going on in terms of stress and all of that stuff that writing has just literally been the furthest from my mind and not something that I'm willing to dive into right now. And 
or haven't been willing to dive into. I mean, I've wanted to. I'm a writer. It makes me cranky a lot of the times when I don't write. Most of the time, under normal circumstances, I get very cranky when I don't write. But the thing is, right now, right now I need to get my note. The thing is, right now, it is just, it requires a lot of thinking and a lot of strategizing and um, just more than I have right now to do that on my own. And um, the videos are easy. Videos have always been easy, but uh, writing, not so much. <laughs> writing requires a lot of thinking and I just I haven't had it in me to deal with it of late. So my husband came in and I'm not quite sure where I was at. If I'm repetitive, I'm sorry. But I think I was commenting on how um, I'm currently just evaluating and I am taking steps. They just aren't with clear-cut goals right now. I mean, I, I do know where I want to go eventually. So I know, well, for example, when I say I know where I want to go, I don't have a clear-cut goal on the amount of time or the amount of weight that I will be lifting, that I want to be lifting by the end of the year. I need to see where I'm at right now. I need to work with that and figure out, um, figure out ways to work around my knee, my pain in the butt knee, and things like that. And then I will have a better idea of where I can go and how far I need to, how much I need to look at what I want my progression arc to be. Um, assuming, of course, we don't have another crazy year. Please, God, no, not another crazy year. Please don't need another crazy year. Not at all, please. So, um, so yeah, I am doing little things now just, just to get things started. But with no clear, no clear goal, no clear end in mind at this point, other than to uh, evaluate where I'm at. Where's my diet at? Where's my writing at? Where's, you know, the different things that I'm looking at, making goals for, I'm just basically checking out and trying to see where I'm starting from so I can figure out where I want to go. One of the things that's not on my list is weight. I'm not trying to lose weight. Uh, however, I will say, you know, when you do start uh, programs of any kind of fitness, it's always a good not idea to know like where you stand in terms of your weight and um, in terms of like measurements and stuff for me, because when you're building muscle, muscle is what leans out your body. So that's what I'm focusing on is the muscle. to um, determine, that will help, uh, I should say, that will help shape my body. Um, most people, when they say they want to lose weight, they actually want to lose fat. And the best way to do that is to honestly, yeah, you should, you know, do things that are actually burning. But if you want an actual, to get some actual definition in your body, you need to look at um, lifting. And I have to say, I am actually very pleased with what I did yesterday because thing is, five years ago, <laughs> God, it sounds so weird to say that. Five years ago, when I ended up having to put down my weights because of an injury, um, I injured an elbow and um, I had basically, I think I had tried to go up too quickly. But when I did that, I was at um, 10s and 11s, and I was trying to get myself moved up to 12s, so 11s and 12s. 
basically the way I work with weights is I kind of I alternate the types the weights I use during the, the workout and um, so my primary I was I would start at like 11s and then I would go down to 10 for a bit and still working and then I would go back up to 11s and I was trying to change that from that to working out with 11s go um, you know working out with 12s going down to 11s and then going back up to 12s I think I did it too early did it too soon <laughs> and I injured an elbow and having had a previous injury on um, a foot I had gotten planters or something like that um, I knew it was gonna take a while to heal but I didn't expect everything else to come up after that but at any rate what I'm trying what I was trying to say before I got distracted by just being me uh, <laughs> I um I had hoped I had hoped to go to 12s and I think that's what caused the injury. So I got that started yesterday and I, like I said I'm really pleased with where I'm at and um so tomorrow I try again and I'm going to try upping the load and seeing if that will work for me or if I have to keep it at the lower load for now. And that'll give me an idea of where I'm going and what I'm doing. You know. Give me a starting point. Um, and then I can figure out where I want to be by the end of the year. Assuming that I keep, you know, keep on track. Because the hardest thing, honestly, is the actual habit. Especially since I'm not doing it every day. I do my weights every other day. I give my muscles a bit of a chance to chill out between ses sessions. And since I can't alternate um, upper body with lower body right now, <laughs> I may just have to come up with a separate core. But again, it's got to be something that doesn't include my knees. And that has really been hard for me to figure out. Got a few exercises, but it's been hard to figure out overall. I said my writing is at zero, so I already know we are practically starting over on my writing. And I haven't really thought about anything else at this point. Um, editing. I need to get back to editing my friend's novel. She's like me, been sort of trying to ignore this year. <laughs> this year has been rough. Oh, I shouldn't say this year. I, we are in the new year. This year has not been rough yet, but 2020 was rough. I mean, you know, with the pandemic and everything, and it's just been you all know that I'm sure this is a pretty color I like it I like it and I'm not finding this particular pot liner to um, oversaturate and bleed really easily which is also nice well some of them you can it's real easy to end up with too much on your brush So that you end up with a lot of bleeding. I also know we're going to want to work on the diet a bit. Things have slid. Um, when you're under that much stress, it's really hard to make sure that you're, it's really hard to just cook every night from scratch. Uh, we prefer it. We have found that um, my husband and I in particular are becoming a lot more sensitive to certain foods and so in addition to the usual pandemic stress um, because we didn't want to cook and we were um, ordering out way too much <sighs> that we spent a lot of this year not feeling well 
Yeah, bellies were not happy because of what we were eating. Um, but we've gotten a few things so that we can start uh, reorganizing a bit about uh, looking at the diet again and going back to, um, you know, doing our own cooking which I'm actually looking forward to. It's harder for me right now. I actually can't do much cooking. My husband and my daughter have to do most of it because of the stupid me. I honestly don't think we're too far off right now. We've actually been gradually, you know, after the early days of the pandemic when we were, st everybody was home and it was just, I don't know. Is, is it just me or is it more stressful when everybody's in the house all at once? And you know, you're sitting there going, this should not take more time out of my day just because there's more people here. And yet somehow it does. I haven't figured that one out either. At any rate, so uh, we are looking at where we're at. I think we've already started a, you know, kind of getting back into the groove of things. And... Um, my father-in-law helped us out. He got us a freezer, so now we have a place to... One of the things about living in an apartment, I don't know how many of you live in apartments right now, but one of the things about living in apartments is those fridge that they give you are just... They're too small. They're too small for a normal family, much less a family with a chef. And we have just been like... We haven't been able to keep up on any kind of, like, say, meat. We can't keep any backups of meat or anything because our freezer was just so tiny in this fridge that they have in this apartment. But now, my father-in-law has um, sent us a freezer, and we are very happy with it. And we've already begun filling it up. We used um, some of our last stimulus to make sure we have food on hand and that freezer is part of that and uh yeah i'm i'm we're already starting to work with that my husband's already starting to be a bit more creative with food again he had stopped for a while because you know it's like it's really hard to be creative with food when you don't have as a chef when you don't have the food and so now we can get and keep the food so that he has different things to play with and try. So anyway, we've started working on that again, which is really nice to see. Um, having, you know, options for dinner instead of nobody wants to cook because nothing's in the house of what we want. And we're trying to balance things out again and get back on track with our diets and go back to home cooked meals and yeah, all those things. So. Yeah, very, very focused on getting back on track for the most part. Alrighty, so this is our completed look. Um, I'm already having issues under this eye. Please ignore it. I don't know. This one eye, it's it's aggravating as so I'll get out. But here's our look. Again, all one palette and this as my liner. Uh, I have to say... I'm, I'm actually, uh, this may not be available anymore or very soon will shortly not be available anymore, but that has me interested in trying some of their other palettes sometime in the future. And I'm really impressed with the liner at this point. Um, it's better than Mamacita and, but, but <laughs> it's also more expensive than Mamacita, let's make that clear. But it does seem to have a slightly different formula so that it seemed harder to flood this and, and get it too loose on the eye. Whereas with the Mamacitas, you have to be very careful because you can end up with too much of your setting spray or whatever you're using to activate it in there and you end up with a lot of feathering. I didn't have that problem with this one. If anything, um, I had trouble adding enough of the, um, of the setting spray I used just to be cautious. Uh, so far, uh, just like I said, this is a very quick review for anybody who's interested. I have not had this very long, so this is just, you know, one of those quick initial use reviews. Uh, I, I'm impressed so far. The colors stand out. They, I did have to, to dampen my brush for the, 
uh, shimmers, but that's okay. I don't have a problem with that. Some minor changes that I made between what you saw and what I'm wearing now is that I added a little bit of this white underneath the brow, and I also deepened my purple and my red on my eyelids. Uh, but that's it. And underneath I did a light purple to red to dark purple underneath for the lower lash line. Um, I am otherwise, I have to say I'm fairly impressed at this point. I think this, it's not, for a, for something that looks like it would be a very colorful palette, the colors are kind of muted, but in a beautiful way. So they still show up. They're not bright. I think this is something that you could actually use for work because it's not it's not like neon or anything but it is still colorful and yet some of these colors are very easily blended for a more neutral look so yeah i'm i'm already very impressed and um would probably consider using it and and as you all know one of the tests of eyeshadows for me is whether or not it stands my inner corner and so far this one is holding up so that is also very impressive for a um a lot of the indie brands don't do that for some reason some some of them do <laughs> this one is standing up to the inner corners of my eyes so i'm very very pleased with that uh so that is the look and Hopefully my ramblings for uh, goals versus re resolutions made some kind of sense on what I'm doing and why I do goals instead of re resolutions. What about you? Do you do resolutions or do you do goals? Do you see a difference there at all? Uh, do you already have goals or resolutions set for 2021? Uh, just let me know. Let me know down below what you're doing for to make it through 2021 hopefully like i said earlier it'll be a better year please be a better year and um we can all you know not necessarily get back to normal but get back to better uh i'm, I'm looking forward to better so that we can actually go ahead and reach our goals and resolutions if we wish instead of having to be stressed out about everything else that's going on in the world right now. Anyway, that is it for the day, and I hope you like what you've seen, and if you do like what you've seen, I hope you will subscribe. When you subscribe, please hit that notification bell so you know when I upload. I currently upload two days a week, Monday and Thursday. However, we do have bonus videos. We do indie brand openings. I do have, I think I should have an indie brand opening that went up before this one. And uh, yeah, so we have the indie brand openings back this year. I've got a number of them. I put out my list for 2021 and I've already added three or four more brands to that list. And one of the brands on that list I'm not so sure about because it ended up being a whole lot of different things. I'm interested, interested, interested in it, but there's only one eyeshadow palette on the whole site. So we'll see what comes of that. But if you're interested in those, we do those. Also, my son's uh, new box should be on its way this month. Probably closer towards the end of the month. They apparently do not start shipping until around the 15th or so. So we may not see it till towards the end of the month. But that has been ordered and taken care of. So all of you who are his fans, you will get to see him again soon. And if you send anything, you don't have to, but if you send anything, those will also go up as bonus videos unless you don't want me to do that. If you choose not to have it go up as a bonus video, just let me know with a note in your box or you can join the Dami Tries This Facebook group, which is listed down below. And you can let me know on there that you have sent me something and that you do not want to be embarrassed by me on this channel by having me open it up here. As my daughter says, I'm not sure why you'd be embarrassed. But then again, who knows? If you're interested in any of those, you will need to have that bell click because they do not go up on regular upload days. If you're part of my notification squad, please check both your subscription and your bell to make sure they're both still active. I haven't been kicked off any channels lately, but I'm still not getting email notifications. So, I don't know. If you go to the site, though, I will be in your notifications bar if that bell is clicked. So, do check that. Do check that just to make sure. You never know. It only takes a second. And if you choose not to subscribe, well, I'd be sad and disappointed. Really, I would. However, you are always welcome back here. And when you do come back again, don't forget to bring your cup of tea. And it don't need to be as almost as big as your head. You don't need to bring a 20-ounce cup. 
At any rate, so this has been steeping for at least 10 minutes, so hopefully that's enough for it to strengthen up. We'll get more of the vanilla. Hopefully we'll get a bit more of the rooibos, roy rooibos, rooibos, rooibos. One of these days, I swear. Let's go ahead and give her a sips and we will get on our way. That is a nice tea. Ah, that is a nice tea. I like it. I like it. I think, yeah, I think this is going to go on my, my to buy again in the future list. This is, that is a really nice tea. Wow. Alrighty then. <laughs> I'm impressed. That's two in this box that have been really, really good so far for me. At any rate, that is it for the day. I hope you have a good one. Bye.